All right, what's up, YouTube? Today we're going to take a look at MTG Arena. I'm going to give you my first impressions. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks. And we're going to take a look at some packs. I'm going to open some packs. So, let's do it. Like I said here, I'm going to start out with kind of my first impressions. You know, this is what you see when you first log into MTG Arena. You get all set up, you get downloaded, you get your key entered. This is what it brings up for you. So, I'm just going to skip all the stupid stuff that I did trying to figure out how to play a game and show you how to do it. You go in here, you go to Ranked Constructed. And you press play after you've selected a deck that you want to use. And it'll put you into a game that is supposed to be against someone that is similarly ranked to you. Um, that leads me to my first gripe about the game. Uh, I think, in my personal opinion, that with a new product like this, when you first log in, it should be just like any other app game that you download. You know, when you first download Candy Crush... You get on there, and it gives you a demo. It goes through and shows you how to do things and what to press and what to uh, uh, click on to make things work and get into games. And you know, once you're in the game, it gives you tips and hints on how to do things. And I feel like they should add that feature in here just so that uh, new players, uh, maybe people that are attracted to Arena that aren't used to the regular card game even, you know, they can get an idea of how to play the game, how things are going to work, how to start playing a game. Uh, I really feel like that would make everything a little smoother, especially, you know, after that first time that you're logging in. Uh, it also leads me to my second gripe about this game, and that is the ranking system. Because I, honest to goodness, cannot for the life of me figure it out. I'm sure I can go look it up somewhere. But I've been trying to decipher this code on my own to figure out what it's telling me, and I can't do it. So I got on Twitter. Uh, if you're following me on Twitter, I'm sure you say heard me say something about uh, you know being a level one player playing against a level five player. I don't know what those levels mean. They don't mean anything to me <clears throat> because I have been levels one, two, three, and four and had all kinds of cool little symbols that go along with those levels, but I don't know what they mean. And again, I'm sure I could look that up, but I don't feel like for a ranking system, you should have to get online and Google it to know that you're playing against someone that is similarly ranked. I, I mean, should, they should simplify it so that you know that if you're a level one player, you should be playing probably level one, two, three players instead of you know, five, but maybe fives, maybe it's one out of a hundred. I don't know. All I've seen is one through five, so I'm assuming that they've got one through five associated with these bronze uh, or gold or silver emblems that somehow match you up with similar players, but I don't know. It's driving me crazy, uh, and I'm not going to Google it until I absolutely have to because right now it's not really affecting the play of the game, but just frustrating so if you're a level one player and you get matched up against a level five player i don't think you need to freak out uh there's options for you to do things with your deck to make it competitive and uh you know not get trampled over so that'll take me to my kind of second point here and that is the decks this is my number one tip if you're not going to watch anything else in this video, please pay attention to this part because it will change the way you play Magic the Gathering Arena. They give you these 10 decks when you first start out. And once you have these 10 decks, you also have, I think it starts you out with 12 packs, 3 of each set, or maybe it's 15 packs, 3 of each set. Uh, anyway, you get these pre-built decks that you can then use those cards that are in the packs as long as well as wild cards which we'll go over in a minute uh, to improve these decks and make them better that being said they suck 
Uh, like, I really like black green explore decks. I had one that was really good. It did a lot of good stuff. I like, I had a really good white green cat deck. So, you know, these were two decks that I tried uh, and I found. Let's open up the green black explore deck. So you go over here and it shows you your deck list and everything that's in it. Now, if you look here, this shows you how many cards of this type are in your deck. There's a ton of one ofs and you don't get a lot of good consistency out of this. So this deck is not nearly as good as the black green explore deck that I had built and was using uh, you know, to play against my friends. So it frustrated me. So what do I do? I want to improve it, right? You want to get better stuff. So you use your wild cards. These are wild cards. You can't see it here, but let's see. What wouldn't be a terrible... Duress is a good card. So if you click once, it puts a duress in there. Click twice. Now you can see there's two duress. Click a third time, and it asks you, do you want to redeem a wild card? You can turn one of your common wild cards into duress. It can't be undone. Confirm that. Boom, I get another duress. So now there's three duress in here. So that was just an example, show you what the wild cards do. You can trade your wild cards in for any card in the game. This is currently just showing me the cards that I own, but I can go in and add in the unowned cards. And you can see these little diamonds here show that I don't have any of these particular cards here. And you can sort by color and all kinds of other fun stuff. So it'll only show you certain cards. So you can hunt down the cards that you want. Currently they have uh, everything from, I believe, Amonkhet to Dominaria. <clears throat> so you can find whatever card you want within the sets that they have included in the game. I'm assuming that based on the fact that they currently have only Amonkhet and Newer, that they may not take this out of beta phase until after rotation but I don't know for sure otherwise I feel like they would have started putting the uh, other sets in there again just speculation I have no reason to think that or believe it or anything like that but okay so we've looked at the black green deck we've looked at how to tell if you own a card and how to get a card if you don't already have it you know you just click on the card it'll ask you if you want to redeem a wild card and you can get any card you want. I don't have any rares, so when I click on this one, it doesn't ask me. It just says no. So, uh, that being said, like I was saying here, these decks are very inconsistent. There are a lot of one-ofs and things that don't really make sense in the deck. Uh, and that's okay. I mean, for a, just starting out, these decks are okay. You will not win games with them. I was getting very frustrated because I had taken, let's go back to, nope, sorry. If we go back to the decks and we look at the green-white deck, <clears throat> I had taken and added some things in here. I used my wild cards to buy extra pride sovereigns and uh, a few other things. I don't even remember what I've done. Sacred cats. Uh, anyway, so I had gotten some more cards. I think I got an extra Regal Caracal. I'm not sure. I don't remember. But anyway, you know, I used my wild cards to, uh, you know, improve this deck a little bit. Uh, but it still is, this is not the white green cat deck that I had put together and played at work and had great success with. This is a shell of that deck that has a lot of stuff that I don't want in there. So, in my personal opinion, the best way to do this when you first start out is have a deck in mind have a deck that you like that you know how to use that you enjoy playing and that is successful for you and then go in here press this plus button and it will there we go it will give you a blank slate and you can search for and uh, uh, filter out cards and get the cards that you want to put in your deck so that you can make as close as possible to the deck that you want to use with the cards that you have available and with the wild cards that you've got before you spend your wild cards trying to improve those other deck the pre-built decks use those wild cards to get cards that belong in the deck that you want to play with otherwise you're gonna end up with a bunch of 
Why I I also let's go back here. I'll show you another thing I did. I heard that Mirror Folk was really good. So when I had been getting beat using the Cat deck and the Explore deck, I came in here and I played a couple games with the Mirror Folk deck. I bought some cards. This was the one that I've really invested the most in. Um, I tried to make this card or this deck worth playing. You know, I bought extras of a lot of things. And again, it just it wasn't that good it, even though i had used up all my rare and mythic uh wild cards it was it was not improving the deck enough to make it so that it was successful consistently against other players so what i ended up doing was going in to create a new deck i did a white black control deck and then i really found my i really found a good niche here in the white uh, blue black control so I put together a deck that has a whole buttload of counter spells, removal, uh, some big creatures down here once you get to the end. Got a Karn in there. Um, and this really was the how I... it. I have a blue-black control deck that I use and play with, and it, it's successful. And I found the cards as close as I could to the deck that I have. And then added in some things that maybe I wasn't able to get because I didn't have the right wild cards anymore. Because I had spent them on the other stupid decks that ended up not working in the end anyway. So before you go trying to improve the pre-built decks, uh, get a list together. Get an idea together. Get a deck built on your phone or on paper or on tapped out. However you build decks. Build a deck that you want to use. And then when you come into the game, just do a custom deck from the start. That'll make sure that you don't waste your wild cards on cards that you're going to end up not using anyway. That's my, my number one piece of advice. I know that was a long piece of advice and had some extra crap in there that you probably don't care about. But that's my number one piece of advice. If you're going to start playing, try to build your deck the way you want it from scratch instead of wasting your wild cards on the pre-built decks that end up not doing very well anyway. So, uh, that being said, let's go back and look at the packs, that, or the decks that they do give you, just in case. Uh, and I'm not saying don't use these decks. I'm just saying that if you want to do a blue-white, uh, uh, what is this, blue-white control, maybe? Uh... No, it's not really blue-white control. I don't know what this deck's supposed to be. Looks like just a bunch of stuff. And I know I've played against this deck and beat it with my deck that I built. But anyway, so let's go back and you, I can do something that I know what I'm talking about here. If you want to do a black-white vampires deck, instead of going in here and trying to figure out what to take out and put in, uh, just remove everything you can even keep this you know if you go back to decks and you want to keep it called the legion of dusk double click it remove everything from the deck and then start fresh that's another option too that way you get to keep the uh cool deck box and the name and everything but you can build that deck around uh, uh what you want to so they've got whatever the heck this thing was supposed to be Blue-white Ascension, uh, black-white Vampires, black-red Pirates, blue-red uh, kind of control spell weaving is what they call it. Is it spell weaving? So that's fun. Black-green Explore. They've got a blue-black control, a red-white aggro. They've got red-green dinosaurs, green-white cats, green-blue merfolk, and these are two decks that I put together, so... Uh, that's going to be my number one piece of advice. Now, let's go over here to the store, and we can check out what they have available for purchase. So, you can get packs, like I said before, from Amonkhet, Hour of Devastation, Ixalan, Rivals of Ixalan, and Dominaria. You can do that by building up your coin total and buying them one pack at a time for a thousand coins. Uh, or you can purchase gems, if we go back here to the store... 
you can buy gems in quantities anywhere from four dollars ninety nine cents up to a hundred bucks uh, depending on how much you want to invest in the game and how much you uh, you know think that you this is going to be a product that you're gonna stick with so I did go ahead and buy some gems I wanted to open some packs for you guys just to show you how the process works and maybe we'll get some cool stuff in the process so I got the 3400 gems we'll open up a bunch of packs and should be pretty cool also on here they've got the redeem code button in I think it's New Zealand they've started including cards in your actual booster packs that have codes on them that you can use to redeem here uh, I'm not sure what it gives you whether it a you know if they give you a booster pack on here because you bought a booster pack in real life but they're doing the testing right now to see how it's going to work and hopefully it'll come to the rest of the world before too long and like i said you can get all kinds of packs in here so i think what i'm going to do is purchase this 15 pack of dominaria and it says Packs contain at least one rare wild card. So I don't know if that means that if I buy 15 packs, I'm guaranteed to get out of those one rare wild card, or if that means that every pack that I have will give me a rare wild card. That would be pretty sweet. But it says packs include at least one rare wild card and three uncommon wild cards. So let's do this. We'll go over here to our packs, and... Let's crack open the first one. We'll see what it, see what we find out. So, if this is a wild card, yeah, rare wild card. So maybe that's what every pack is going to have, which will be pretty sweet, really, because that'll mean that I can use these wild cards to go get whatever I want. So, let's open up another one and see if that is going to continue. Nope, it didn't. So, maybe that meant that if I get those 15 packs, I'm guaranteed to get one rare wild card. Uh, so, we get our Mar Marwin the Nurturer. And these are all your commons. This is a common wild card. And then you get two uncommons and a rare in every pack. So, we really want to find rare wild cards or mythic wild cards any wild cards are good because they help you get exactly what you want instead of just stuff right of bells and lock pretty cool i don't know who that was talking but he sounded freaking scary oh i just said we needed to get a card and we get a Whitney! I got a corn! I got a corn! It's awesome! That's what it means! Sorry. I'm back. I'm back! I got a corn! We need to add that into our deck here after we're done. I won't make you guys wait through that mess, though. Oh, sweet crap! We got a Lyra Dawnbringer. Man, that's too bad this isn't paper. If these were paper packs, we would have hit the mother load, right? Got another sissy. Sissy! Got a Joda, Damping Sphere, Wild Card. See, none of this is bad stuff, right? Babe, I got a card! Got a Demon Lord Bells and Lock. I may end up putting this in my blue black control deck. I'm not sure. I am not sure. Let's see. What else we get into? Anybody see how many we had left? We got a Memorial to Glory. This is an uncommon wild card, in case you were wanting to know what they look like. They're very similar to the common wild card, so you got to pay attention. We got a Tashar, Ancestor's Apostle. I've gotten quite a few of the whites. I don't know why, but it seems like I get more white than anything else. Maybe they're trying to tell me something, huh? I love Urgaros. I don't know if you guys have played with Urgaros, the empty one. But um, he's a 4-3 flyer. And whenever he deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card at random. If they can't, then you draw a card. So you empty their hand, and then uh, you start getting to draw cards. So this may be one that I definitely put in the, the black-blue deck. Got another rare wild card, so that's good. And you can see this one's grayed out. If you go up here and look, uh, once you hit... 
a certain number of extra cards. You get four cards, and then once you get more than those four, they add them to the vault, I think is how this works. And then you can claim that reward, and you get extra wild cards. So I'm glad that happened while you guys were watching, because then I get to show you a little bit more. So I'm at 7% vault progress right now. Once you get to 100%, then you... Uh, get into now I'm at 10% so it looks like I'm getting 3% per pack maybe I don't know there's another mythic wild card and uh, so we've got a lot of good stuff we'll be able to upgrade our deck quite a bit Let's see what else we got here man I can't believe I got a Karn Kazarov that's my uh, we did a random draw at work for our brawl commanders and I ended up with this Kazarov Joker so that's pretty cool Let's see, Danitha, Fungal Infection. A lot of people are saying Fungal Infection is going to end up being the next Fatal Push. I don't know. We'll see, I guess. Squee! I've got a couple squeeze. Let's see here. Got a wild card, Garner the Blood Flame. There we go, Jaya. If I wanted to do a... Maybe a red, mono-red control type deck. A lot of burn spells. I've got that one too. Cool, I got another Urgaros. So that's good. And you can see I'm already back up to 23% on my vault progress. So I'll get a lot of, you know, cool uh, wild cards when I fill that thing up again. And you can see here, like this card is grayed out. That is because I already have four of these. So it throws them in the vault, I think is the best way to describe how it works. Oh, I guess I better first see what this is, huh? Oh, a little dinosaur. All right, last pack. Last pack. Can we get another Karn? Probably not, right? No, no way. But we got another Tashar, Ancestor's Apostle. So you guys got to see me open some stuff. You got to see my deck. You got to see uh, kind of the first, what's your, your first look at... Uh, MTG Arena, and hopefully, you know, some of the tips in here will help you when you get into Arena and make the process easier, make it easier for you to be successful. Uh, I love playing Magic, but I hate losing all the time. I don't mind losing, uh, I just don't want to lose all the time, and when I was using these pre-built decks, it just seemed like I couldn't win, or if I did, it was a lucky win, is how it felt. So I wanted to build something that would then be competitive. And uh, I think that the best way to do that is to either build a new deck or go into one of these formats that you like, empty out the deck list completely, and start fresh. Like I said before, that's my number one piece of advice. So we'll go back home here. Uh, we've got some time i've already won all my 15 matches so i can't win anymore to get packs for the week but hopefully all that was helpful and i guess we'll see you next time thanks for watching deuces hey thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video come down here and press this thumbs up button make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell to turn on notifications so that you'll see when we post new content if you got anything to say hit us up down here in the comments section we always love hearing feedback and comments from people that are watching. Let us know what you think. See you next time.